Welcome to Tim's Vinyl Confessions. I'm Tim Durling. I know this is a busy time of year, so I uh, want to, uh, first of all, thank you for watching all year. It's been great. I want to do a short little episode, a fun little episode. It's a band that's not very well known, but they're, uh, they're a band I think should have been much bigger. Not a lot of music to talk about, and uh, I've done a few episodes now talking about Coney Hatch. And uh, I think I've done a couple episodes on Coney Hatch. This one's another one. Uh, the twist this time around is that... Um, you know, there are certain Canadian, but growing up in Canada, there are a lot of bands that I love that you never, ever heard much out of them in the U.S. I mean, you know, for every Rush and Triumph and, and Brian Adams and Loverboy that really made a splash in the States, there were a lot of bands that just couldn't crack um, south of the border for whatever reason. And subsequently, their albums weren't really well known down there, so you didn't see a lot of U.S. copies, and uh, Coney Hatch definitely fits that category, so... I've got some cassettes to talk about today on Tim's Final Confessions. Now, Coney Hatch in Canada were on Anthem Records, which is the same label as Rush, same label as Max Webster, and it, as was the custom for most acts that were on Anthem, they had a U.S. deal, and probably worldwide, with Mercury Polygram. So the, the three albums that Coney Hatch did in the 80s did come out in the States. Um, I didn't know that till probably later in the 90s, and uh, they were released on Mercury. So I've got uh, some cassettes to talk to you about, starting with the first Coney Hatch album. Very dark uh, printing of that first album cover, but uh, that's the U.S. cassette of the first Coney Hatch album on Mercury. In the famous beige cases. This is what the cassette looked like, and not really anything in it for credits, there's nothing in this J card, uh, and then there's a bunch of uh, manufacturing things and what to do if the tape breaks down and where to send it. The only credits are there, which is produced by Kim Mitchell. So that's the first Coney Hatch album on cassette. In Canada, we see these. You know, if you're if you're if you're like me and you're looking around at, at used vinyl, used cassettes, things like that, you do see the spot the Coney Hatch albums. You usually see the Canadian. You always see the Canadian editions on Anthem, um, never the U.S. ones. Here's the second one, Out of Hand. Now, looking at it, the front cover, can't really tell what label it's on or where it's from, and then it becomes readily apparent that is a U.S. Capitol cassette. My uh, Def Leppard Pyromania looks just like this, the way it's written. That cover. I don't think this is the original ca case it came in. I think that's a Canadian cassette with the polygram mold on it, but maybe it came out like that in the States. I just think it would have been one of the beige colored ones. There's the cassette itself. And a little bit more with credits this time. Again, completely blank here, but when you fold that J card down, there's all your song titles and a little tiny bit of information, the band members, where it was produced, and things like that. So the third Coney Hatch album, Friction, uh, came out in 1985. Here is what the cover looks like. This time takes up the entire, well, it's sideways here. Love, always love the Coney Hatch logo. That looks more like, uh, if these... If these albums had been successful, they would have probably been reissued to look more like this. That's the, the Mercury that I'm used to seeing, uh, some of the, un, the early Rush albums, and in some cases some of the Kiss stuff. There's the back cover. Oh, the back of the cassette, anyway. There's the cassette. And this one has pretty much the full credits in it. Except for the lyrics. It doesn't have the lyrics, but it has the full credits and all the thank yous here. And that was it, I mean, for, for many, many years. Um, and then in 1992, Anthem puts out a best of. It didn't get released in the States, so I'm going to show it to you anyway. I've already showed you on this uh, on an earlier episode, but it's called Best of Three. Makes sense. Best of the, uh, the first three albums. Signed by Carl Dixon himself right there. Super nice guy. Currently going solo, although I'd love to have a fifth Coney Hatch album. Didn't think we'd see a fourth, so I won't be greedy. So this is an issue uh, that came out. Uh, Anthem Records was distributed by Sony in the mid-90s. That distribution changed to MCA, so they just stuck a sticker on here and 
try to get rid of the old stuff. It's far and away the most readily available Comey hatch. If you're into melodic hard rock, I would highly recommend picking this up. Always been a favorite of mine. There's a nice write-up on the band here. The only thing it doesn't mention, of course, because it's the Anthem Records, um, it doesn't mention the fact that their albums were released on Mercury. It just said three worldwide releases. So there you go. If I can uh, turn people onto their music, I feel like I've accomplished something. Thank you so much for watching Tim's Vinyl Confessions.